Have any of you ever been scammed or maybe spoken to a scammer online? Maybe I saved you from a scammer or maybe you are the scammer. You guys, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to figure out who the scammers are and who the legit people are. Let's get into this, it is gonna be good. So you guys, the weather is too nice today to do this video from the couch. So I am gonna be outside and I'm gonna stop along the way and discuss uh, certain tips that hopefully will help you guys from getting scammed. I am going to use real documents in this video. I am not going to name names. Uh, the documents were either sent to me directly or sent to me from people that felt like they were being scammed. So. Whatever you guys do in the comment section below, I have no control over that, so you guys handle it. Whatever you want to do, go for it. So, the first tip. You guys have the internet, a fantastic tool. You guys can check the reputation of whoever it is that you're talking to. Anybody can go on Facebook and open up a business account in the name of Average Joe Exotics and all of a sudden they look like they're a business. Uh, they seldom have gone through the trouble of doing a DBA, running a D, uh, doing business as uh, ad in the newspaper, opening up a business account and all those sorts of things that go with it, paying taxes and all that other stuff. Those people usually are not doing that. Obviously when you're dealing with overseas international people, they don't really have to do that, but check the payment details, the bit, the account details, the names should match. A legitimate business should have a business account. So if you're doing business with Average Joe Exotics, there should be a business account under the name Average Joe Exotics. That is just one sign of a legitimate business. But the internet is a fantastic tool. You can ask around, have you ever heard of this person? Have you done business with this person? You can ask the person that you suspect may be a scammer, who have you done business with? Um, can you send me proof of that and that sort of thing? So just do your due diligence, get on Google, type in the name, maybe a couple different search names, um, ask for the person's real name, search that as well, and just see if there's any, uh, any inquiries, any negative feedback and that sort of thing. And that is basic. I would expect everybody to be doing that, even with people that you're dealing with on Morph Market or Fauna or just on Facebook or whatever. Just check, use the internet is a fantastic tool. So number two, payment information. Western Union to me is a little scammy. I've used Western Union, also I've used it for international payments, but when somebody just straight out the gate asks for Western Union, usually I'm kind of put on alert a little bit about maybe this being a scammer if it's somebody that I've never done business with before. An international bank wire is the standard, but you need to be very careful that you're doing your due diligence and checking out these people because once you get into your bank account, your bank is going to ask you many questions. Are you familiar with this person? Are you sure you want to send it? on and on and on, all these security questions, and you click yes, 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 and as soon as you hit send, that's it, your money's gone. If you get scammed later, you cannot go back to your bank and say I got scammed. Well, you can, um, and they may, they may launch like an inquiry on your behalf or something, but usually that is not gonna happen. Your money is gone. So make sure before you're doing anything like that that you guys are, are very, very confident who you're sending your money to is legit. So in getting back to the bank wires, when a person requests money from you, they have to send you certain things, such as a SWIFT code, what bank, what branch, maybe their home address, their phone number, their name. I always look at all of those things together as one thing and make sure that they're matching to the person that I'm speaking to. If the name is the same, then of course I feel a lot better. Um, if it's a different name, yeah, maybe it's a family member that they want you to send the money to, but then sometimes it's in a totally different area or a different region or a different province or maybe even a different country. That's 
when things get a little funky and I kind of want to be asking some more questions. So just, again, common sense, you guys, sort of pay attention to all that stuff. Don't just look at it like it's a like a username and a password and you just type in all that information just to get the money through out of your bank and into theirs. Uh, there's little tidbits of personal information and a lot of times scammers do not want to give that up to you. So pay attention, hope and uh, pray that the information matches and then you know that you're probably dealing with somebody that's legit. If it doesn't match or if it's way different, eh, you need to start looking into it a little bit further. Number three, you're gonna get a price list. Evaluate the price list, you guys. Don't be a dreamer. Don't think that you can get, you know, $8,000 Boland's Pythons for $400 with an unlimited quantity. It's just not realistic. So don't fall into that. Don't be a victim. Don't volunteer to be a victim. Use common sense. Evaluate the price list. Perfect ratios, male to female, pairs of this, pairs of that. That isn't really how it works. A big quantity of lone females of whatever. That's also not really how it works. Are the animals super rare, but you can get it in like 10 lots or 20 lots or something like that? Nah, uh-uh. Um, are the animals illegal? Is it something that comes from a different country? Is it Australian species that, uh, that are clearly smuggled even if the list is legit? Are things misspelled? Are the scientific names misspelled? It's just all things to look for. For me personally, I don't wanna do business with somebody that's misspelling scientific names because chances are those things are gonna be misspelled on documents, on invoices, and US Fish and Wildlife is gonna have a field day with you if they start finding all these weird typos and things. I mean, if they really wanted to make a problem for you, it is not hard. There's so many ways that you can make mistakes and that they can uh, use those mistakes to really make your life difficult. So those are things to, to pay attention to. Evaluate the price list. I can tell a scammer a mile away just based on the price list alone. I know what's available and usually from what country. Oh, also, are there different species from different countries on that one price list? If you're dealing with an exporter in Indonesia and they've got animals from South America on there and, and different countries, no, that's not how it works. That's, it, it's, it's all scammers. So it's pretty easy for me to tell. So here is a stock list, 2021, you can see the date, and this is the CITES list. So if you scroll down, start looking at stuff, Apodora olivaceus napuanus, I don't even know what that is. It just seems like it's a bunch of words just jammed together. Um, but babies, $65. So Apodora is a monotypic genus. So I'm sure it's probably supposed to be Papuan olive python. $65 for babies, guys. What a deal. Uh, looks like there's 100 males and 100 females available. The next one down, uh, Boland's pythons. It's Somalia Bolani at this point, but uh, anyway, you can see on there 100 males, 100 females, babies, $40. Such a deal. Um, just stuff like that. It just screams out to me that it's, um, it's a scam. You get into the Varanus page, and there it is. There's the Parentes, the Giganteus. Uh, $800 for babies. Such a deal, right? Uh, lace monitors, $750 for babies and it looks like there's 100 males and 100 females, things like that. Those are the things you need to be looking for. Now, moving into the tortoise special offer for 2021. And you go down the list and you have species from all over the place. You have snapping turtles from the United States. You have, let's see, what else, what do we see? Mississippi something or other, uh, captive bred import supposedly. And then you have um, cherry heads, you have captive bred Indian star tortoises for $30, radiated tortoises, $42 for imported captive bred babies. You guys, this just screams scammer. 
anybody that looks at this and thinks that this is a legitimate export list, you almost deserve to be scammed. I mean, this is crazy. They even have a wide assortment of tarantulas from all over Mexico, Brazil, Costa Rica, Trinidad, and you just go down the list and this is an Indonesia price list. And then of course they're going to dazzle you with a bunch of photographs. Now this might come off sounding a bit extreme, but look at the skin color of the people if there's hands or appendages in the photographs. This is supposed to be Indonesia. So when I see Caucasian skin, I'm usually thinking that these are just simple photos just taken off the internet, but apparently it is enough for some of you to get scammed. So pay attention to the background, the surrounding, what brand are the cages, those sorts of things. You can usually kind of match things up if there's enough stuff in the background of these photos. Just pay attention. And then if your order ends up looking like this, this is like a dream. This is so, so much fantasy is built into this. Um, and just scroll down and look at it. 20 Aru babies for 80 bucks a piece. High white Aru males, 300 bucks a piece. And then of course they're gonna offer you high white Aru females, 300 bucks a piece. So there's, now you have perfect ratios, right? Dumeral monitor babies, the little orange heads. 10 heads of babies, I think in the entire time that I've been importing, I've probably seen like three hatchling Dumerals babies, but it hit, here you can get a 10 lot for $40 a head. It, it's, it's a joke. This is, this is fantasy land we're talking about here. Okay, number four, ask for a CITES permit. Usually you guys are gonna be doing business with CITES protected animals and those animals will require a CITES export permit. If those people are legitimate and they're doing business, they have pulled CITES permits for previous customers. Ask for one. They can redact the information, they can take names off, they can do whatever. Usually they don't because they don't even know how to do that or why they would do that. But the CITES document that I've been sent, um, one of the excuses that I hear from the potential victims is that uh, it's not even in English. It is in English. It may have some Indonesian words across the top and, and some of the stuff, but most of the categories, the squares, the columns, the ca all that stuff, it is in English. It's in both languages. So go through and look at it. Um, you want to see that business name or that person's name on the CITES permit. If it doesn't match, something's up what species are on there, what country is it going to. You know, China, China is a huge consumer of, of meat and skin and that sort of thing. So that information is going to be on the CITES permit. It's going to have, uh, if it's dried meat, if it's skin, it's going to be in kilograms, it's going to be in kgs. Um, so, you know, do the math and figure it out. You're not going to get live animals from a guy that's a skinner sending out skins or, or frozen meat or something like that. It is just not the same thing. A lot of times a scammer will get a hold of a CITES permit somewhere, some kind of way, and then use it as their own. But again, if it doesn't match, if it doesn't add up, uh, it, it might be a legitimate CITES permit, but it's not theirs. Look at the date. How old is it? Or has the date been been erased or blurred out? Uh, is it three years old? Is it five years old? Those are the things to look for, you guys. Um, I realize that most people that are trying to engage in this business for the first time have never even seen a CITES permit, or a lot of people don't even know what CITES is or how to spell the acronym. But it is very important, and if you don't know what you're looking at, you can just reach out to me. I've seen plenty of them. I know what's going on, but that is, uh, that is also one thing to look for is a CITES permit. And I've seen fake CITES permits where CITES wasn't even spelled right. It's C-I-T-E-S and on the, on the fake one, it was CITES, C-I-T-I-E-S. Everything's just doctored. It's just a homemade thing on, on a, on an Excel document. So you just have to be kind of careful what you're looking at. CITES document, very important. And again, 
getting back to that statement where people will say, I don't know, it's not in English. Number five, foreign language documents. Yeah, there's a lot of documents out there that are issued by governments, um, permits to collect or possess or trade in different areas or little locality areas or whatever by local governments and that sort of thing. Don't be fooled by that. That doesn't allow somebody to export. It just allows them to just do some little business in, in some sort of way. You can um, take key parts of those documents and type them into Google Translate and it'll tell you what's going on. You can look at the dates again. Has the date been blurred out? Is it three years old? Is it five years old? Is it from last week? Is it from last month? Whatever. Um, make sure documents are signed. There should be a name on a document. It's not just a signed document with nobody's name or permit permittee's name on it or anything like that. There needs to be identif identifying information on that foreign language document, no matter what it is. So again, a little bit more intensive because it's in a different language. If you know somebody that speaks that language, can read or write it or whatever, um, it's pretty easy for me. Facebook's pretty easy, you know, you can just reach out to somebody and just say, hey, can you help me with this? You know, what does this say or whatever? And most people are pretty cool about it and, and they'll help you out. So foreign language documents, don't be dazzled by the BS because they'll send those a lot. I've been sent them directly also. And, and a lot of times it just means that this dude on this island has permission to collect animals. That's all. Doesn't mean he can get animals from that island to a main export hub and from that country into my country. That's not what it means. So anyway, foreign language documents, they will send those to you um, and don't be fooled by those. Okay, number six, evaluate the estimated freight charges and the delivery time. Freight is usually going to run you between $1,000 and $2,000 per consignment, depending on the size of the shipment and what country it's coming from. I've seen people get quoted like $150 in freight. That's a scammer. Um, did they ask you for your import-export license? If you don't have an import-export license, you really have no business talking to any of these scammers or legitimate exporters anyway, but did they ask you for one? Um, they know that they cannot send you a shipment unless you have a federal permit to, to engage in that type of business. Are they promising you CITES permits in a week and those animals will be shipping to you in just a matter of days? Probably a scammer. Is it going to come to your front doorstep or do you have to go to an airport? If it's coming to your front doorstep, scammer. You need to go to the airport and have those animals, they're going to be uh, inspected and cleared through customs and all that sort of thing. So that is going to also indicate a scammer. Are they promising you CITES animals and or a shipment during a time when legitimate farms and exporters are waiting for their quota to be released? Like which would be a dead time for a real exporter, but yet they're promising to ship to you right in the middle of that time while all the other real ones are just waiting and stuck. Obviously, that is a scammer as well. So pay attention. Freight costs are usually kind of a dead giveaway because the scammers don't even know how much it costs in freight. Um, and they don't know the process. And if they promise to send a shipment to your door, no, stay away. <laughs> The U.S. sellers are pretty easy to verify. You guys have friends, friends on Facebook, contacts, whatever. You guys can verify different people out there. Um, there are a lot of people that are faking it as importers, that they say that they import and they don't. Usually it doesn't matter. I mean, if you want to buy an animal and, and you're going to spend the money and, and get your animal domestically within the borders of the United States, then it's not that big a deal other than the people just being dishonest or just pretending to be something that they're not. But I have also um, had people reach out that were like in Canada that sent, you know, some average dude money in Florida, promised to export... Uh, monitors to the guy. Do you have CITES? Yes, I do. 
the guy doesn't have CITES and he took the money and never was able to export the animals. So that's when those types of things come into play and are pretty important. Ask a U.S. seller for CITES. If they want to play the game, if they want to pretend to be an, an importer, that means they have the 3177 form, the clearance form. Um, ask for a copy of it. They can redact it. They can take the name of their supplier out, whatever. Tell them, tell the seller that you need it because you might be re-exporting those animals to Canada or something. If they can't come up with the CITES, they're... I don't want to say that they're a scammer, but they're pretending to be something that they're not. So, um, but all that stuff's pretty easy to, uh, to verify online. You know, a lot of these guys, they have like three or four, like really loud cheerleaders uh, and then hundreds of unsatisfied customers. But again, it's real easy to check that stuff out online. Um, there's little retail shops that are using my name as their supplier shops that I haven't spoken to in, in a year. Uh, shops that I've never even stepped foot in, that I've never sold anything to, but yet they tell their customers that it all came from DM Exotics. Apparently they're embarrassed to say the name of the people that they're really getting animals from. I have no idea. I don't know if I should take it as a compliment or not, but uh, if you want to verify that stuff with me, send me a message. I'll be more than happy to tell you guys who I sold to and who I, who I did not. So it's a lot of weird, goofy, stupid stuff going on on the internet and, and in the United States in particular. A lot of people have gravitated towards this as a business because the business is quite strong right now and people are spending money on animals. But very, very few legitimate people doing what they're portraying themselves as doing. So Easy to verify though, you guys got the internet and um, yeah, that's it's an easy one to address. Okay you guys, and we are down to number seven. Did you ask me? It is not my job to police the internet, to police the world, but I am more than happy to provide you guys some guidance when it comes to ciphering through the scammers and the legitimate people that are on the internet. I have saved hundreds of people thousands of dollars. I have also had people check with me after they have sent deposits and I wish they got to me prior to that stage, but they have lost money, lost deposits anyway. Um, but it adds up to thousands of dollars and these scammers are making a lot of money just because they have a Facebook page or some fake little page. So feel free to reach out and ask me. I have saved so many people money. I'm going to put my cash app. No, I'm just kidding you guys. Um, but feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions and do me a favor. If these videos are helping you, if I have saved you money in the past, if you find any of the information valuable in my videos, like the video, dislike the video, share the video, comment on the video. It doesn't matter to me. Just feed that little bit of engagement to the broken YouTube algorithm to get my videos recommended. It helps me out. I am not making any money from my videos. I have no sponsors. Um, I'm just doing videos. So hopefully you guys will find some benefit and again you guys feel free to reach out put comments in the comment section below if you guys have anything to add uh, i pretty much covered it all thank you very much for watching you guys i hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video take care